Hey guys, what's up? It's your man Pete. I hope everyone had a wonderful Christmas holiday or whatever other holiday that you guys celebrate. So we've been getting a lot of new data and insights coming out into the news lately about how we've reached the bottom here for condos here in the city of Toronto. And if you watched my last video and heard what I really had to say, I was only updating you guys all on the current prices from early in the year till the end of the year. So I'm not specifically making any assessments about whether this is the bottom or whether we're still going to continue to drop or is the market rebounding already. Although we are starting to see some improvements in some of the better areas of the city, so it's pretty hard to make predictions about what's going to be happening in the coming year, which is why you need to hit that subscribe button as soon as possible so that you can stay in tune and stay close to this channel so that we can keep you informed about when the market shifts and the winds change. But the truth is what I'm seeing is that this is going to be a long drawn out process for the condo market simply because a lot of the renters have moved out and become home buyers or they move moved back home with families. So I just don't see them coming back in droves being able to fill in all the empty vacancies and we're not even talking about travel and tourism and people who are overseas trying to come over. I just don't see the borders opening up that quickly and that freely for a while especially as we're seeing this new more contagious virus strain coming out of the UK. I mean maybe we'll have a better idea in Q2 or Q3 next year as the vaccine gets a full rollout and more Torontonians, Ontarians and Canadians get the vaccine but we are still absolutely in the middle midst of this downturn of condos here in Toronto and specifically in downtown Toronto. But in this video, I just thought I would share with you guys some of the ideas and strategies that I use with some of my clients and even for ourselves on how to take advantage of a dip, you know, how to buy when the market is soft and how to take advantage and buy when it's at the bottom so that as soon as the market returns, you start getting gains and making money right away on the way up. And again, like I mentioned, we are starting to see some blue chip neighborhoods such as Bay Street starting to see some minor recovery and of course I should point out that you know every condo building is different you know they behave differently because they're built differently right they're built even in different times so if we were to take Bay Street as an example all along the street you've got condo buildings that are 20 30 40 years old and then you've got brand new ones that just finished last year and if you guys caught my last video you could clearly see that the newer stuff just isn't really moving at all in terms of the price you know in fact sellers are actually getting full asking price or pretty close to it but then meanwhile buildings that are a little bit older are much easier to negotiate on and that's what we're gonna get into in this video but the gist of it is that older buildings and older units that have gotten run up over the past five or ten years have made a lot of money they've gone up significantly and so there is some room if a particular seller in those buildings is fairly motivated to go you might be able to get fifty or eighty thousand dollars less than you would have at the same time last Last year but with the newer stuff you know you'd be happy if you can get maybe 20,000 off the ask price and that would be a win so the truth of the matter is if you want to get the best possible deal if you're buying a condo in downtown Toronto is you kind of want to choose the buildings that are somewhere between 5 and 10 years old why are these buildings good well because they were built a little bit larger than the stuff that you're seeing today you know where if you were looking for something that was around you know 600 or 650 square feet it might be the same price as a newer condo that's maybe one to three Three years old but the size might only be about 500 square feet so you're looking at about another 100 to 150 more square feet and the prices are going to be a little bit lower for the older stuff because well it's a little bit older so if you want to get the best price possible from a negotiating standpoint I would recommend targeting buildings that are around 5 to 10 years old but the buildings that are between 5 and 10 years old are really not that old they, they still have those modern amenities the modern lobby and of course the modern style layout building you're not really suffering and if the maintenance fees are not particularly outrageous you know they're pretty much standard that means the building is well run and it has a proven track record over time and to be honest you actually don't really know how well a building is performing unless it actually has some time under its belt you know it's gone through a performance audit it's gone through the moment of raising maintenance fees and filling up the reserve fund so it's been through some stuff and I particularly like buildings that have actually gone through things and they know how to deal with problems than totally unproven proven buildings, boards, and property management. And although the high rise in condo game is still relatively young here in the city, we are starting to see that the quality of buildings and developers and the materials that they're putting into the buildings are really starting to show. And so we're starting to see which builders and developers are actually the quality ones because it's hard to tell when they're selling pre-construction, you know, how good of a builder it actually is, right? But over time, we start seeing how these buildings are being managed. We're seeing how quickly they're getting worn down and how much 
the maintenance fees are being affected by that. But I'm not here to demonize the developers and the builders because every single building and every single project is different. And of course, the long-standing management of the property, you know, from the property managers all the way to the board of directors and sometimes even the engineers, this matters as well too in terms of managing the maintenance fees and making sure the building is running well. And then we also sometimes have to factor in things like tenant mix or if the building allows for short-term rentals like Airbnb, which are definitely going to wear down the building a lot faster. So in a roundabout way, what I'm trying to say is when the tide goes out, what really sticks around is the quality. And I'm obviously a huge fan of Warren Buffett who believes in buying quality when the market goes down. And I think that that applies in the condo market as well too. So when the overall market is going down, you want to make sure you're picking up the quality buildings, the ones that were built by reputable developers and have really good management and boards in place. This type of information you can find in the status certificate. And then of course, when it comes to selecting an actual unit, you know, floor height and views are obviously pretty important, but as long as you're higher than the fifth floor, you should be fine. As long as you don't have a brick wall in front of you that's completely blocking out all natural light, you should be fine. What you should really be focusing on is the interior space, the floor plan, and if there's any outdoor space as well, such as a balcony or a terrace. All of these things do have an impact on the price, but what you should really be focusing on is the interior of the space. How livable is it? How does it function? Does it have extra space for you to prepare for an office so that you can work from home? People are calling these zoom rooms now and from a size perspective i would say you should definitely choose something that's at least 500 square feet anything less just starts getting you into the micro territory so if we do the math quickly at a thousand or 1100 bucks a square foot let's say 1100 bucks a square foot that makes it about five hundred and fifty thousand dollars for a 500 square foot unit condo which sounds pretty affordable in this market right now downtown doesn't it my suggestion is if you had a budget of around 600 or 650 thousand then you should definitely think about bumping up the size you know going from maybe a one bedroom to a one plus den where that den can actually be used as an office or another bed because i've said it once before and i'll say it again guys you just cannot replace space i'm typically more of a house guy myself but in terms of condos you definitely want to make sure you have a little bit more square footage and you want to make sure that that space is being used wisely in the unit so if you were to choose a slightly older condo something in the five to ten year range you're definitely gonna be able to find stuff in the 600 square foot range with an actual proper kitchen or maybe another extra room or den for your office or a second bed and as long as the maintenance fees is somewhere around 70 75 cents a square foot which seems to be the market rate these days then you should be doing just kosher and of course as always you want to fully review the status certificate with your lawyer to make sure that the building is well funded for future expenses there aren't any major lawsuits or assessments against the corporation and you definitely want to keep an eye out if there's any kai tech plumbing in the building because buildings between five and ten years old you might see that sort of thing coming up so yeah in terms of negotiability what we're seeing in the market right now is slightly older stuff is more negotiable you're definitely going to be able to get at least fifty thousand to maybe eighty thousand off compared to a year ago. And when the stuff is a little bit more worn in, it's kind of like you're buying a used car because everyone who's really financially and budget savvy knows that you want to buy a car that's maybe two or three years old so that the initial depreciation hit falls on the first buyer and not you. But in the case of condos, slightly worn or a little bit older buildings means that you can get a better price. It's more negotiable and you don't have to get into any bidding wars for it where you're getting more square footage the building still looks pretty modern it's well managed and you know maybe just some light touches like new flooring or paint will actually spruce the place up and make it look brand new again and don't forget really nice light fixtures i'm a big fan of interior design and sprucing up properties so if you guys are into that then you definitely want to give us a shout and we'll work together on that so i hope you guys found this video useful valuable in some way i know for some people who are ready to make a move this is definitely going to help you save and make a ton of money because again i'm all about helping you guys secure your financial future and making the right moves at the right time buying in the dip choosing good quality and then just watching your money work for you who doesn't want that right guys so thanks again for watching please make sure you hit the subscribe button give us a like feel free to leave us a comment new subscribers and likes always makes me smile and makes me happy so thanks for watching guys really appreciate you and uh we'll see you in the new year thanks again and bye for now